Welcome back to Daily Devotions from Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Andrew Howe, and we're going to continue our journey through the book of Acts. To start off today, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever told God you would not do something? I remember uh, being a, a teenager, and my mom had encouraged me uh, to uh, go and visit the seminary, and, and, and she had thought one day that I, I probably would be a pastor and I uh, had countless other people in the home, in the congregation I grew up in and I kept saying no I would never do that and I remember uh, uh, president ret now retired president Dale Meyer of my alma mater Concordia Seminary uh, preached at my home congregation and he was just starting his ministry at the seminary and, and I remember talking to him and I remember telling him flat out I would never be a student at his seminary and I wouldn't be a pastor. Well, years later, I ate my own words. That's much what today's text in Acts chapter nine is about. There's several things, telling God things people would never do. One is we start with Saul. We know from the last couple of days that Paul was uh, we don't know from the text that he actually murdered people, but he definitely commissioned and gave permit people permission, especially when it came to Stephen's stoning. But here you have somebody responsible for the persecution of the Christian church, Saul. You know, this is one of those accounts that's probably the original Lifetime movie. You have a murderer turned servant of the Lord. And as Saul was walking along the way, he has an encounter with Jesus. Starting at verse 4 of chapter 9, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And Jesus said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. So Jesus confronts Saul head on. Look, you're persecuting me. You're hindering the advancement of my gospel to go forth in my kingdom. And yet he gives them instructions. You're going to go find a man, and he's going to give you some things to do. Now, this man was named Ananias, a disciple at Damascus. And obviously, people knew Saul's reputation. It'd be like if I were to go to one of my elders and say, look, I want you to, to find a, one of those murderers in town, and I want you to go appoint them uh, to be one of our elders. They'd look at me like I was crazy. But yet, here's Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And Ananias said, here I am. And the Lord said to him, rise and go to the street called Straight and at the house of Judas, look for a man named man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying and he has seen it in a vision, a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. Following that interchange, Ananias says, look, I've heard this man's reputation. It's kind of like telling God, I'm never going to do that. And, you know, I'll give Ananias the benefit of the doubt. I probably would be in those same shoes. But this is what Jesus says in response to Ananias' excuse. Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. You know, from that moment, throughout the rest of this chapter, Jesus kind of point carries out what it does require for Saul. Saul would lose his blindness. He would lose his sight, I, I should say. He became blind. But yet Saul would become Paul, better known as St. Paul, one of the most prolific Christian 
theologians and writers in our New Testament. Somebody, when we share words from Scripture, when we, we learn about different ministry events of Paul, we don't even look back to what his former life was, a persecutor of the Christian church. So Saul, in his own mind, definitely would tell anybody in his previous life before Jesus, I would never be a servant of of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I would never be a sharer of the gospel. Well, God had other plans in his life. He would become so influential in the early church, and yet he would say, face the same persecution that Jesus himself would face, like many of the other servants of the gospel. They would persecute it to the point of death. But they took very seriously the words of Jesus, that the word of Christ goes forward in the world. You know, there's probably things that we do all the time where we say, God, I will never do that. And we eat our words and we learn and we grow from those moments. And God uses it to strengthen our faith and to have us step out in faith. Maybe you're dealing with something like that right now. Maybe you're, you've been wondering, you know, how can I serve God, especially with, you know, you know the pandemic coming hopefully to an end and, and wondering, you know, got to be home, got to be isolated. You know, maybe you're coming back to church. Maybe you're prayerfully uh, viewing worship online and, and maybe you need to have that nudge of the Holy Spirit to say, here am I, send me a servant in God's kingdom. How can God use you? Maybe it's something you've told God no a dozen times, but he's still laying it on your heart to prayerfully consider it because he's leading you to it. You know, there's a, there's a quote that I often hear and it's, God doesn't uh, uh, call the qualified. No, he qualifies the called. Maybe you've said those words. Maybe you've felt those words. Those words are true. God calls you to the very task that he wants you to do. And with the Holy Spirit's help, you'll do it. You pray with me today. Father in heaven, we thank and praise you that by your grace, you call us to believe in the mercy work of your son, Jesus. You called Paul. You call each and every one of us. Yes, we're sinners, but we're alive in Christ Jesus. And we celebrate that today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Have a blessed week.